So in a 3 by 3, as you can see here, if you add any row or column, 8 plus 1 plus 6 is 15, 3 plus 5 plus 7 is 15, 4 plus 9 plus 2 is 15. So the magic constant for this 3 by 3 square is 15. Similarly for a 4 by 4, if you add this, you will get 34. So the magic constant is 34. Now there is this formula which can be used for finding the uh, magic constant of a regular magic square. So a regular magic square is what? Magic square where we have numbers starting from 1 and going up to the square of that. That means if it is a 3 by 3, so the last number would be 3 square, 9. If it is a 4 by 4, the last number would be 4 square. So here what we are taking as n, n, n into n square plus 1 by 2. So this n is nothing but this number, that is the number of rows or columns is n, is n, not the number of elements, number of rows or columns is n. So if you want to find the magic constant for a regular magic square, what we have to do, we have to just put the value of, say if it is a magic, 3 by 3 magic square, so 3 into 3 square plus 1, that is 3 into 10 divided by 2. So the magic constant will be 3 into 10, 30 divided by 2 which is 15. And we saw in the earlier example it was a 3 by 3 regular magic square, the magic constant was 15. So for 4 by 4 what will be the magic constant? 4 by 4 regular magic square. What will be the magic constant for 4 by 4 regular magic square? 34. 4 into 4 square plus 1. 4 into 17 divided by 2 will be 34. What about 5 by 5? 5 into 26 divided by 2, 65. What about 6 by 6? 18 into 6. 6 into 6 square plus 1, that is 37 divided by 2. Right? One one by one. So these are some regular, these are just examples of partly regular. We will we'll go ahead with the construction procedure for constructing odd order magic square. So there are many methods of constructing an odd order magic square. An odd order magic square you must have seen mainly in this uh, uh Rani's shows and all. Like when they perform, they are asked to fill up the numbers in a 5 by 5 normally. I mean that's what I have seen. So there will be a 5 by 5. So 5 by 5 comes, comes under odd order magic square. And to construct an odd order magic square, there are different methods. So we will see some methods using which you can you can choose whichever method is easy for you. So first we will look at a 3 by 3 magic square. So 3 by 3 regular magic square we are looking at it first. So regular magic square will start 1, 2, up to 9. So we have to place the numbers in such a way that it adds up to 15, the same total. So how do we place them? The procedure is very simple. All we have to do is first, okay, we will we'll just go to this. See, top row, middle cell. You write 1. Top row, middle cell. And then you have to go up diagonally right. Okay. So go up diagonally right. So that is this position. But if you had a magic square here, this would be the bottom row, last cell on the right side. Right? That is this position. So next number should be here. So 2 will be there. Now from 2, again you go diagonally up to the right side. 2, so next will be 3. So if you had a magic square there, then 3 would be there. Right? Again, if you go next from 3, so 3 is what? 3 is here, middle row, leftmost cell. So you write 3 here. And from 3, when you go diagonally up to the right side, there is already a number sitting over there, 1. So, you will have to write the next number below 3. So, whenever you encounter a number here which is already there, the next number you have to write below 3. So, 4 will be below 3, then diagonally up, 5 will be in the center, 
6 will be in the top right and from 6 when you go to 7 to be a bit careful because the square would come here diagonally up so that means it is this position so that is the position of 4 but there is already a number sitting over there 4 so you have to write below 6 that will be 7 below 6 and from 7 again you go diagonally up so as you can see that position that is top row first cell so 8 will be there and then again diagonally up so that will be 9 at the bottom here now we can see if we add all the rows columns or diagonals we will get the same total right now this is for a 3 by 3 magic square now you can try instead of starting from here you can try to make a magic square by starting from some other cell later on ok you can just try and you will find that if you start from any other corner cells you won't be able to get a magic square try however you want put in this place or this place or this place or this place you put one and then you try in some method any 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 way you like and you can try but if you put one here or here or here you will be able to create a magic square but you can't follow this method that diagonally up no so then the procedure would differ so if you are writing here it would be diagonally down to the right side you are starting from here, it would be diagonally down to the left side. So starting from here, it will be diagonally uh, left to this side. Right? So if we have to just follow this procedure, starting from here, then it will go like this. You can even do diagonally left here also and proceed. So what is if you start from if you think of any other uh, making any other magic square, in the end you will get the magic square in this form only. That means maximum what you will get is a mirror image of this one that is also possible that will also be a magic square a mirror image if you keep a mirror here if you keep a mirror here if you keep a mirror there if you keep a mirror here so four reflections you will get but they are not different they are just <coughs> the same thing so in like cyclic quadrilaterals a rotated image or a, uh, so that we can't uh, consider as a different one so we get four reflected images of this magic square and if we rotate this also, we just rotate this, so 1 would come here, 7 would go here, 9 would go here and 3 would go here. So the entire thing we are cutting and rotating, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees and another 90 degrees. So we will get 4 rotational images, but that also will not be different, it will be the same. So total we will get 9, that is 4 plus 4 plus 1 original. <coughs> But you will get only one, only one magic square is possible for a 3 by 3 uh, magic square. And when we take the transposition, row and column machine. No, for 3 by 3. You try. No, I, the method, uh, what I know use that. Okay. I compare that with you and it's So, the but the positions of these numbers, one will never come here. <coughs> the transposition is row and column machine. Ah, so that is the mirror image, not ultimately. We will see that, we will see that in the end. Okay. So, next is uh, construction by folding method. Now, this folding method was given by Narayana Pandita. And Narayana Pandita, in his uh, text Gadita Kaumudi, he has dedicated one separate chapter for magic squares. So, what he says is, you prepare two squares like this. Two squares like this. And in this, you write down numbers. Those are writing, you can just take a pause, try to understand and it will be clear to you. Later on, you can write it down. Write the numbers 1, 2, 3, middle column, 1, 2, 3, middle row, and 1, 2, 3, diagonally like this. And 2 and 2 over here. Okay, easy to remember. Middle column, middle row, and diagonally up like this. And 2 and 2 over here. This is just one way, you can interchange it so that it becomes just an easy way of remembering. Similarly, you take a progression like this, arithmetic progression, 0, 3, 6 is the difference of 3. 0, 3, 6, 0, 3, 6 and whatever is left, you put here 3's. And what you have to do is, you have to add it as if you are folding your 
palms like this. So when we are holding it like this, the little finger will get added to the little finger, the ring finger will get added to the ring finger and the middle finger will get added to the middle finger. So what will happen here is this, this 2 will get added to 6, 3 will get added to 3, 0, 1 will get added to 3. Again 1 will get added to 0, 2 plus 3, 3 plus 6. So 3 plus 3. 1 plus 6, 2 plus 0. So when we fold it like this, then we get a magic square. So in the earlier magic square we had seen 1, 2 and 3 here. This is, it's, it's just a reflected image of that. So, uh, not reflected, I think it will be uh, a rotated image. Uh, 1, 2, two will be here. In, uh, Image. One, two. Yeah, it's a mirror image of that, right? So here was two. So here you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this way is called folding method. This was given by Narada Pandita. And instead of zero, three, six, you can try putting some other progression also. Like say, if you want to put zero, four, and eight, would you like to try it out? Zero, four, eight. Instead of zero, three, six, you put zero, four, eight, and instead of one, two, three. You put a, I mean, you put one, two, three, and you put zero, four, eight. Later on, you can try out with different combination. Just see if that is working. And you fold it like this. Instead of zero, three, six, you put zero, four, eight. Zero, four, eight. And add it like this. Fold it. One, two, three, one, two, three. Huh. First one should be the same. Second one instead of 0, 3, 6, you put 0, 4, 8. Huh. But while adding this we can, that's why I have colored the column so that you add it correctly. Yellow to yellow and blue to blue. Are you getting a magic square? Yes. What is the total? No. 16 won't be the total. Huh? 15 would be the total. Check no. 15 would be the total for a regular magic square. We saw that was the formula for finding the total of a regular magic square. 18. 18. You are getting the total as 18. Right? So you would have got this magic square. It is 1, 2, 3, 4 is missing, 5, 6, 7, 8 is missing, 9, 10, 11. Right? You must have gone wrong somewhere in adding. No, that one only I did. This one. She did not do with 4, 0, 4, 8. Oh, you did with, with uh, the same thing. Okay. So, instead of 0, 4, 8, now later on you can try out with 0, 5, 10 or 0, 6, 12. Or instead of starting with 0, if you start with some other number, suppose you start with 1, you do like 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, see what you are getting. This you can try it out. What? And then you can make some observations what you get when you change these things. Okay, so this is a method given by Narada Pandita. Uh, this is called folding method. And this we are doing for 3 by 3. Now the same process we can follow for 5 by 5 also. So if we have to construct a 5 by 5 magic square, let us go to the first method that we saw. That was I heard somebody calling that method as J method. Means just a, an easy way to uh, tell children to remember the way. Because when we do J, we take our right hand diagonally up. So J. So just remember J and then do it. It, it is Nobody has given a name like that. Just some teacher was saying that we, we can call it as J method so that children can remember it easily. So we will also call it the first one as J method. This one as folding method. And we will try to create a 5 by 5 magic square using the J method. So what is the first rule for an odd order magic square, we have to start with 
top row middle cell top row middle cell now we have to go j diagonally up right so two will be here which means this will be the bottom row 1 2 3 fourth cell bottom row fourth cell this is one way of looking at it or you can just pull it down if you are getting it here just write it on the last cell so that is easy to remember again j so 3 will be here again j so again 4 has to be here that will be here 4 5 Then there is the one sitting over here. So six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. There is six over there. So eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then sixteen would be. Now this is this position. Right, that is bottom row, left corner. This is where initially one might go wrong. After this fifteen, this would be the bottom row. Are you following this position? Yeah. If you had a magic square here, diagonally up on the right side means it would be bottom row, left corner. But there is eleven sitting over there. So after fifteen, we have to write down below sixteen. Again, take. Seventeen, eighteen. So this would be here. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Again sixteen. It is clashing. So twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty. So now we can add and check. So just add and check. This will be twenty-four plus one, twenty-five. Twenty-five plus fifteen is forty. Forty plus twenty-five is sixty-five. Now this is a regular five by five magic square. So we we can use that formula for regular magic square. What was the formula for finding the magic constant for a regular magic square? Yeah. N into n square. n square plus one divided by two. So this will be n is the number of rows and columns five into five square plus one divided by two. So five into twenty six divided by two. Five into thirteen is sixty five. Now you can check for every row, column, and diagonal. You will get the same magic constant. If you observe a little carefully, just look at the result for three by three. What was the magic constant for three by three regular magic square? Three by three regular magic square, fifteen. What is the magic constant for this one? Sixty-five. Is there some relation between any of the numbers here and any of the numbers that are like from looking at this? Can you tell me directly without calculating? Just keep observing for a minute. If you get something, just tell me. Five into three is fifteen. So five is in the center cell. Here, thirteen into five. So by five, five, five rows, five rows and five columns, right? So the middle number into five, we will get the magic constant. If we construct by this method, if if the method is changing, maybe we get some other number in between. So then, still the constant would be sixty-five. <laughs> the constant will not change, but the center number would be different. So this is one of the ways of constructing odd or odd order magic squares, and this can be done for seven by seven, nine by nine, eleven by eleven. The procedure is the same if you are following J method. If you are following folding method, again here we have to square a five by five magic square, five by five square, and in that we have to arrange the numbers one, two, three, four, five, just like how we arranged uh, this one. What is that? For three by three folding method. So if we are doing so one two three four five one 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव एंड थ्री 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 टू टू वन दिस विल बी फाइव फाइव सो डायगनली यू कैन गो ऑन राइटिंग फाइव वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव वन दिस विल बी वन वन टू इन द सेम वे टेक ए प्रोग्रेशन जीरो फाइव टेन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी एंड फॉर्म अनदर स्क्वायर and then add it using folding method and you will get a magic square 5 by 5 magic square so this was again this this is narada pandita's method called folding method right can i go ahead okay now we will look at a 4 by 4 uh See this method is very simple. All we have to do is first write one two three four five one two three four five in the middle column and middle row. And if here it is two, start from here one two three four and five. Here it is one. So one two three four five. Here three is there. So one two three four five. So here it is four. So one two three four five. You can go in that order. So just try to think of some easy way of remembering this. Okay, so this is done, and can I have your attention on the board over here? Here are four four by four magic squares, and they are some special four by four magic squares. Means in this one, all rows, columns, and diagonals, of course, you will get as thirty-four uh, because we are taking the numbers from one to sixteen. So the sum of all the rows and columns would and diagonals would be 34. But apart from that, there are still more other ways how you can get the result 34. If you add four particular cells, still you will get 34. Rows, columns, and diagonals. This will naturally become 34. Yes. What is that? Middle four. Middle four. If you add 13 plus 8, 21. 21 plus 10. Thirty-one, thirty-one plus three is thirty-four. Any other cells? Corners. Corners. Seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-one plus four is twenty-five. Twenty-five plus nine is thirty-four. Twenty-one. Right. So the same colored cells. Right. So the same colored cells. If you add, you'll get the same. Same. I mean, you'll get thirty-four. But apart from that, there are still some more observations. Sir, the side squares. Tell me numbers. Sir, top two and bottom two. Seven plus twelve, nineteen. Nineteen plus fifteen, thirty-four. Will it work anywhere else? Twelve plus one. Twelve plus one, thirteen. So that is same color that we considered. Fourteen plus one. Fourteen plus one, fifteen. Fifteen plus fifteen, thirty. Thirty plus four, thirty-four. Same way. Okay. Horizontally also. Seven plus two, nine. Fifteen. Ah, fourteen plus eleven is twenty-five. Twenty-five plus nine is thirty-four. Similarly, these two plus these two is thirty-four. These two plus these two is thirty-four. Any other numbers? Sir, diagonal. Diagonal is of course there. Diagonals, rows and columns will always be there for magic square. Otherwise, it won't be a magic square. We can't call it as a magic square. Seven, twelve, thirteen, and two. Seven, twelve, thirteen, and two. These four cells. Seven plus twelve is nineteen. Nineteen plus two is twenty-one. Twenty-one plus thirteen is thirty-four. Twelve, twelve, thirteen, one, eight. These four also. These for any four adjacent cells, you will still get a. You will still get thirty-four. So like that will apply to all the four next to. I mean cells next to each other. Still there are more observations. The corners. Corners, corners. We have considered same color. Corners we have considered. Nine, six, um, nine plus six, fifteen. Fifteen plus fifteen, thirty. Can you think of three by three squares in that and? Maybe you look at the three by three squares that you get in that. Seven, twelve, seven, twelve. No, three by three, not just three. Three by three. So look at the three by three squares which are there in that. 
and see if you add any 4 cells in that and you get 34. 11, 1, 16, 6. 11, oh that is also, that's, that's a very good observation. 11 plus 1 is 12, 16 plus 6 is 22. So this plus this and this plus this will get 34. Can you do it for some other cells also? 12, 2. 12 plus 2, 14. 15 plus 5, 30, uh, 20. 20 plus 14, 34. So these two plus these two and these two plus these two you will get 34. Anything else? Still there are more. This eight 7, 12, 15, 4. 7, no. 8 and 5 and 10 and 15. Sorry, sorry, 8 and 5. 5 and 10 and 4. So this is 14, 14 plus 14, 28, 28 plus 8 is 34. So seven this is 20, 20 seven plus, but this is not working. 13, 1, 15, 5. If this is working, this also has to work. Okay, okay. 13, 1, 15, 5. Sorry, 13, 13, 1. 15, 1. Uh, no. I don't know, then yes. <laughs> the 7, 3, 10. But get that 13, 1, 14, 14. This is, but will it work for other numbers also? 12 plus 4, uh, Not like 2 is 14. Sir, 13, 1, 10. Sir, so 1, 6, 1, 6. 1, 5. 13, 1, What you are saying? 1, 6. 13, 1, 15, 5. So, will it work for other number? 12 into 14, 14 plus uh, 20, 14 plus 16. So, it has to work. 12 into 16. 6 into 16. Yes, yes, yes. 7, 3, 10, 14. 7, 3, 10. 14. Where is 14? 7, 3, 10. 10 and 14. Yeah, okay. Now, this is a pattern. 7 plus 3, 10. 10 plus 10, 20. 20 plus 14 is 34. 9, 9, 9, 13, 8, 4, 14, 13, 3, 4, 7, 8, 10, 9. Again, there are more. So, we will have to do that. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I am coming to that. So, here if you take, if you take this also, 14 plus 12 plus 3 plus 5. This is the earlier one only. So if you look here, if you look at the earlier one, see here, this is 11, 11 plus 10, 21, 21 plus 6, 27, 27 plus 7, 34. So the numbers in this particular positions, you can see the right cells, if you add, you will get a, what is that, uh, you will get 34. So this is called broken diagonals. Now what is this broken diagonals? If we say suppose if you roll this on a paper, if you make a magic square and roll it together, so this will come on this side. We can roll it and bring this column over here. Right? So this will be the diagonal. So 14 will be the diagonal. Right? Similarly for that also. So that is why pan diagonal or these are called broken diagonal or strongly very strong magic squares. So why they are called strong magic squares because they are already they are possessing columns, rows and diagonals as the same constant. But apart from that there are many other properties and this because of this property it is called pan diagonal. That is if you roll it you will get the, uh, you will get the same total. Now, if you go to the if you go to that uh, uh, observation of uh, Uma Maheshwaran, this one, these two cells that you are adding, again you roll it. These two will come on this side. If you roll it like this, so these two columns will come here. So 11, 1, 6, and 16. So again, this would be broken diagonals. So if we get these type of magic squares, they are called pan diagonal magic squares, if this property is there. And all the earlier properties that you have seen, whatever we had seen here, this plus this plus this, this need not always come true in pan diagonal magic squares. Sometimes it might come, for some magic squares, it, you will see all the properties. For some of the magic squares, you will see 
lesser number of properties. Not for all, but pan diagonal means when you get the broken diagonals, it is called pan diagonal and it will have few of whatever properties we have seen. And there is another one if you take a 3 by 3 square and you take the corner cells 7 plus 1 plus 10 plus 16, it will be 34. So here if you take 3 by 3 squares also and if you take the corner ones, we will get 34. So if you take 2 by 2 squares and take the corner cells, 3 by 3 and take the corner cells, 4 by 4 and take the corner cells still you will get as 34, right? So now the next question is how to construct such a magic square and how many magic squares like this can be constructed, right? Find all the possible magic squares that, uh, that can be constructed. So okay. And there is something interesting you can see here also. You look at this one, I have just coloured it little different. Can you tell me something interesting about these colored cells? It adds up to 17. Why 17? Half of 34. So the idea is, the idea is, if, suppose we know we have to write 3 here, suppose. We can write here. 14. 17 minus 3. If we know we have to write 8 here, we can write 9 here. So if we know the positions of 1 to 8, then diagonally alternate. That is, leave this one diagonally alternate cells. You can fill up with 17 minus or complement with 17. So we just have to remember the positions of 1 to 8. So how to remember the positions of 1 to 8? For that also we just have to remember the positions of 1 to 4. So if we can remember the positions of 1 to 4, it is very simple. So how to remember the positions of 1 to 4? There is a small, just a small rule we have to remember, which uh, they call as Turagagati. The way in which the horse or the knights move in chess. So in a 4 by 4 magic square, we can start from any cell. It is up to us. We have a liberty. I am talking only about pan diagonal magic squares. Now for 4 by 4 also there are many methods of constructing. We are just looking at one particular way, the horse move way. So we can write start from any cell. So suppose I start from here, 1. Okay. I take a horse move and I write 2. I can take here also horse move, I can take another horse move here also. I am just taking any position, 2. And from here, I will just leave a cell blank and jump down 3. Repeat, starting from any cell, take a horse move, come down, leave a cell blank, jump down and go back 4. So I left 2 columns blank and in 2 columns I put 2 numbers. So 1 plus 4, 5, 2 plus 3, 5. Just you have to think of some way how you can remember this. Is this difficult to remember this position? Now everything else is just fill in the blanks. Everything else is simple. So what I am doing is, I will just write down, maybe you can just figure out why I have written down these numbers over there. Okay, reverse is one logic. Another logic is 9. That is 8 plus 1 is 9, 7 plus 2 9, 9, 9. And see how I have chosen uh, the columns. So now in every row and every column there are two numbers. Every row and every column there are two numbers. Right? And the advantage that we get by putting here is, see the diagonally alternate cell. As we can see over that, see 8 and diagonally alternate is 9. Ek chodkar ek alternate. So diagonally alternate, we know what number has to be filled up here. 17 minus 8 is 9. So what will come here? 17 minus 3, 14. What will come here? Here, here. First row, third cell. Diagonally alternate. 17 minus 5. 17 minus 5. 12. What will come here? 
Seventeen minus, minus six. six diagonally alternate. So eleven. What will come here? Seventeen minus, minus seven is ten. What will come here? Seventeen minus two. Fifteen. What will come here? Seventeen minus one. Sixteen. What will come here? Seventeen minus four. Seventeen minus four is. Thirty. Now we can add, and we can see if we get all these properties. All those checking you can do later. But this is the simple way. Now let us try to construct another one using the same procedure, but starting from a different place. So let us start one from here. What will I do? If I start one from the bottom row, left cell, take a horse move. So let me just take a horse move here to Suragagadi. Again, what will I do? Leave. Yes. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. This side or this side, or even you can go this side outside also. So that will be on this side, right? So two. Where will three come? It will not be here. It will not be there also. It will be this side. Three. And four. Look at the positions of one, two, three, four. Here it was column wise. Here it is row wise because we have taken the horse move in a different way. So one, two, leave a cell here three and four. This you will get out of practice when you when you commit some errors. So automatically you will understand which pattern has to be followed. It's not a very difficult pattern. Now where can we put? Eight, five, and or let us think. Why can we put seven? Seven. How many positions are there for seven? It has to be next to two. So one, two, three, four. Out of these four positions, where we can put these two? It can't be here because if you put seven here, it will be next to three and. If you put seven here, then another number six would come out there. So these two rows would be empty. So it can't be these two. It can be either of these. If I put seven here, there will be six. Six will be six. Also, we have to write above three and above four, five, above one, eight, because we are writing all the complements from nine above those numbers. So if you choose above, you have to write above. If we choose below, yes. one and four will come in the first row. Exactly. So if you choose below, that is below two, so that will be seven. So here below six. Now below one eight, so that is this position. And below four is five, so that will be this position. Again, we can see that the diagonally alternate cells are empty. We are keeping those cells empty. So that we can use this property of complement from seventeen, right? And it is just filling the blanks. Remaining things you can do the same thing. So now we have one method using which we can start from any cell. So when we have a magic square, if we start from If we start from here, one, two can be here or here, or if it goes here, it would be in this position. If it goes here, it will be again in this position. If it goes so like that, from every cell, we can see two can be in different different positions. So suppose we keep two, three, and four, and for the given positions of one, two, three, four, there can be two ways of arranging five, six, seven, eight. That is either you can write seven here or seven here. So if you write seven on the right side, accordingly eight, five, and six will be on the right side. If you write seven on the left side, then accordingly those would change. So starting from a given cell, using this particular pattern, there are so many positions where you can put one, two, three, four. From starting from, if you start from this position, then how many possibilities are there? If you start from this position, how many possibilities are there? If you start from here, here, here. So there are many cells from where you can start and see how many possibilities can be there. 
or uh, I mean and for each po position for 1, 2, 3, 4 there are two possibilities for 5, 6, 7, 8 but if that is fixed then everything else will be fixed if 1 to 8 is fixed everything else will be fixed now this is one method I hope this is clear this method is is it clear? yes now there is another way, way of taking the horse move and uh, moving it's slightly just a small change in that so if we start from say 1 take a horse move come here 2 <laughs> and instead of leaving a square and jumping diagonally you write here 3 and you will have to go back 4 so 1, 2, diagonally and then 4 4 would be here so if we start from some other cell we start from some other cell say we start from uh, here so 1, 2 come diagonally or uh, here also 3 and 4 1, 2, 3, 4 or it can be 1, 2, 3, 4 1, 2, 3, 4 or you can put 3 here and 4 here again arrange 5, 6, 7, 8 so 5 will come here, 6 will come here 7 will be here and 8 will be here so diagonally alternate we have left blank so this is another way of taking the horse move and do it so if we construct a magic square or if we have to construct a pan diagonal magic square then you have to follow either this procedure or the other procedure and then you will get a pan diagonal magic square of course there can be more procedures but using these two procedures and starting from any point 16 how many different possible pan diagonal magic squares are there and in that also you will get reflections and rotations so that will be the same thing so you will have to remove all the reflections and rotations so if we have to now how, how will we find out how many uh, magic squares unique magic squares are possible pan diagonal unique magic squares are possible without actually listing down all the th things how many unique pan diagonal magic squares are possible using the first method and this method and how will we find out so for that we will have to think a bit differently but I just leave it up to you we just give it a thought uh, in the evening maybe we can discuss like how many possible magic squares are there or maybe you can just come with the answer how many unique pan diagonal magic squares in 4 by 4 can be there listing down would be a really tedious procedure so try to think of some other logic where you can get without rotations and reflections Maybe if you draw a few magic squares, you will get some idea. Start from one position and see which are the other positions that are possible for a magic square. Fine. Now for 4x4 four four also, Narana Pandita, he gives a folding method for 4x4. Four four. That is, just look at how he is arranging 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the numbers here, it is 1, 2, 3, 4. On the dark cell, it is not very visible. This dark blue is 4 and a little lighter shade is 3 so we are writing 1, 2, 3, 4 1, 2, 3, 4 and here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4 so from left to right and then from right to left 1, 2, 3, 4 and again 0, 4, 8, 12 so see how we are writing 0, 4, 8, 12 see like a mirror image of 3 top to bottom, top to bottom 0, 4, 8, 0 4, 8, 12, 0, 4, 8, 12 and from here it is bottom to top 0, 4, 8, 12, 0, 4, 8, 12 now we just have to add using folding method same procedure for adding when we add this 4 plus 3 this is 4 plus 8 2 plus 4 1 plus 8 that folding method So then we will get a pan diagonal magic square. So here also you can see the resulting magic square. See the positions, it's in the horse move. 1, 2, 
leave a cell blank and jump down 3 and then go back 4 look at the positions of 1, 2, 3, 4 1, take a horse move 2, leave a cell blank, come down 3 and take a horse move back 4 again 4 plus 5, 9 1 plus 8, 9 2 plus 7, 9 3 plus 6, 9 and diagonally alternate 8 plus what number is 17 10 plus what number is 17 and so on not 10 plus what number 7 plus what number is 17 Right? So that way we can proceed. Now this is by folding method of Narana Pandita. And you can try rearranging this 1, 2, 3, 4 in some other way. Instead of left to right, maybe you can try from right to left. And you change this. And change the pattern on the right side. Then you see if it is working.
13 parts of the uh, sorry 18 parts of the next thing 36 parts of the next thing I am just saying if it has to be done like that then if you arrange this particular magic square then we know that okay and maybe we can just you know it, it can be done today also if, we, if this is a formula for making a nuclear box in the atom or any any even fireworks say for example so we have to take say 16 elements and we have to make the formula but I don't want my competitor to know what is the formula Right. So maybe if I make it in the form of a magic square, so it is like many places we get some special sweets like this particular jilebi, like Tirunelveli halwa is, the, is very famous. Tirunelveli is very famous for halwa, and that there also there are two shops where you get the best halwas. Nobody else can make it in that particular taste. So they have a family tradition where they follow a particular secret formula, which is not passed on to somebody else. Like tomorrow you or me, if we go and attack their homes and try to get that formula then that formula is lost but if you code that formula in a particular way then it can be preserved only those people will know how to read this particular thing right so for magic squares we can see a lot of uh, direct applications and these people were using magic squares for that particular purpose okay and now yesterday uh, Uma you we were asking for that uh, if, we, if we are given a particular magic constant Say for example you are asked to make a 4 by 4 magic square where the magic constant is 64 Any number, I am just saying, I'm, I just took a, a number 64 If we have to make a magic square which adds up to 64 How should we choose the numbers or which numbers can we choose? Right, so for that what he gives is, he gives a formula and let this, if this magic constant is k, k is 64 So you have to take another number n. Here n is not, I am sorry I use the same uh, this as n number of rows or columns. This is not number of rows and columns. Take any other variable say 2a. So a has to be half of k. So that means this variable, this, this variable will be half of 64 which will be 32. And you just have to remember this table. Now how to remember this table again you can see 1, 2, diagonally cross and then go to 4 so you can remember the positions of 1, 2, 3, 4 is that difficult to remember? 1, 2, 3, 4 just that horse move 1, take a horse move come diagonally down and then go 4 so 1, 2, 3, 4 is done now instead of adding up to 9 we have to add up to 10 4 plus 6 is 10 9 plus 1 is 10 8 plus 2 is 10 3 plus 7 is 10 and then what, see how we are writing these numbers, same color numbers. So if there is 1 here, I will write n minus 1 because my n is half of 64, 32. In the earlier case for 4 by 4 we were having 34, so half of 34 was 17. So we did 17 minus 1, so 16 should come here. Yes? Do you follow? Earlier magic square 4 by 4 the magic constant was 34 and we were saying 1 plus what number is 34 so 34 was our magic constant k and we are taking another variable here n which is half of 34 which is 17 so n minus 1 17 minus 1 will come here so same thing we are doing over there so take what is the magic constant take half of that and you subtract this number so that has to come here and whatever number is here n minus 1 will be there diagonally alternate same logic logic is not changing at all and see see the total of every row if you add all the numbers in the total let us take the variables only n minus 3 plus 1 plus n minus 6 plus 8 so 8 plus 1 is 9 minus 6 and minus 3 is minus 9 so 9 minus 9 0 n plus n 2 n which is 16 right we can say this is the algebra behind that so here if we take 9 minus 7 plus 9 minus 9 minus 4 so minus 4 uh, minus 7 minus 4 is minus 11 plus 9 plus 2 is plus 7 so 11 11 0 gone n plus n is 2 so
So we arrange numbers in such a way that when we add them 9 plus 3 12 minus 3 minus 9 10 plus n 2n. So that is the arrangement. This is just an easy way of remembering the positions. So it is not because of the positions or the positions do not have any magic because of which the result is a magic square. Actually we are placing numbers in such a way that if we add any row or column then we will get the same total. So now you can take any value for 60 instead of 64. Now this is the formula when k is even. So you can take 64, 66, 62, any number above 34. It has to be minimum 34. So above 34, you take 40, 42, 44, any number you just have to find half of that and write down 1, 2, 3, 4, fill up the addition number with the complement of 10. And rest everything will be diagonally altered. And you can start from any place, not necessarily one has to start from here. You can choose your positions and start from any place and make a magic square like this for a given total. Now this is for 4 by 4, only for 4 by 4. You will get this one, this is the result. Now when k is odd, if k is odd, so I am taking here k as 67. So what we have to do, we have to do this k minus 1, that is 67 minus 1, 66, half of that should be n. So 67 say 8 come below, 66, half of that should be 33. So that will be the value for n. And again we start from any position, 1, take a horse move, 2, go diagonally and then keep 4. But here we take adding up to 9, not adding up to 10, adding up even to 10 or 9. Yes. For even, it should add up to 10. For odd, it should add up to 9. And then see, again same thing, 9 minus. But here, here it is changing. So 9 minus 7, here it is little tricky to remember because here you will say it is not 9 minus 4, it is 9 minus 3. Sorry, n minus 3, not 9, n minus 3. And here it is n minus 1, not n minus 2. So you diagonally alternate. So you will have to remember in some particular way how you will get the uh, what is that? How you can die? remember? So if you are writing n minus 7 for this one, this will be just n. It will not be n minus 1. Otherwise, it will be 2n when you add. When you add the diagonal here, if you write here n minus 1, it will be n minus 7. Minus 7 plus 7 is gone. If you had a minus 1 here, minus 1 and plus 1 will also go. So n plus n, 2n. But we have to get 2n plus 1. So we can't have n minus 1 here. So we are keeping n here. Here also if we keep n minus 3 here, so uh, I mean here when we add n plus n, 2n minus 10 plus 11. So we are left with 2n plus 1 for every row. So for odd, it, it's a bit tricky but uh, with little bit of practice then one should be able to do it. So this also was given by, it's not uh, uh, I, I need to check whether this is, I, I think this is Narada Pandita's formula, not Nagarjuna's formula for this. So Nagarjuna's words was only for the uh, initial thing. So it's my typing error. It's not Nagarjuna, it is Narayana. Anyways, I can change it later. Fine. So, it so happened that uh, by I attended a conference of AMDI and uh, how it started was there was a professor who made a birthday magic square and he gave it to me. So, I really liked it. He said, how did you make this? He said, there is a particular way of making birthday magic square. So, birthday magic square is when you write your date of birth here. That is, if it is say like today, 24, uh, what is this, 20 and 14. This is how we write. Now here 20 and 20 are repeating. So it will not be very beautiful but you can't avoid it. I mean if you are born on the same date then nothing can be done. But suppose it was 19. 
So 19 plus 4, 23, 23 plus 20 will be 43, 43 plus 14 will be 57. So the magic constant is 57. Now how to arrange the remaining cells in such a way that the total becomes 57. So this is, if we can arrange that, then it is called a birthday magic square. So he gave a birthday magic square to me and uh, there was another professor sitting next to him. So he said, uh, you ask him if he can make a magic square with prime numbers. So I asked, is it possible if we can, can we make a magic square with prime numbers? He said, it is possible but it is very difficult. So then I thought, why not try doing that? So that is when uh, I actually started doing something on magic square. And there is another friend of mine, uh, his name is Hariharan. So both of us, we were trying parallel. He was trying from his home and I was trying from my home. And then we finally managed to make a few prime number magic squares. So I'll just share those prime number magic squares because it really helped us study a lot of properties about prime numbers and what kind of things, what kind of observation should we make to find out uh, or uh, rather to make a particular prime number magic square. And with that we got the algebra behind magic square. So that was the most beautiful thing. All these patterns are okay, it is easy to remember. But what is the reason that it actually works? What is the actual logic behind that? That we could figure out only when we uh, started doing magic square. So here actually this was the first magic square that uh, I made with prime numbers. So here the numbers we are using three APs, three arithmetic progressions of prime numbers. So as you can see 29, 41 and 53. So the common difference is 12. Here also the common difference is 12. Here also the common difference is 12. Right? So we took three similar arithmetic progressions where the common difference is same. And the first term in all the APs 29 plus 30, 59 plus 30. So they are also in an arithmetic progression. So if we take three arithmetic progressions, similar arithmetic progressions such that the first term is also in an arithmetic progression then using that we can make a prime number magic or any magic square for that matter. So let us go back to our 3 by 3. So what we have to do is we have to just remember the positions. If you remember position of 1 was here, position of 2 was here, 3 was here. Right? So our first AP was actually 1, 2, 3. That was our first AP, 1, 2 and 3. And see how we are placing it. We are placing it in such a way that every row and column has got one element of that AP. In every row and column you will find only one number from that arithmetic progression. Next was 4, 5, 6. Again you can see every row and column will have one number from that particular arithmetic progression. Again it was 7, 8 and 9. So if you again see again 7, 8 and 9 in every row and column we have that particular one particular element. So if you put numbers in these positions like 20, 41 and 50, 29, 41, 29, 41, 53. That is the first if I call this A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3. So I am putting A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3 like that. So these are the positions that I have to remember. So if I put the numbers in this position then I will get a magic square and here the magic constant is 230. You can see 71 multiplied by 3. Now all these AP things we figured out after we dealt, dealt, I mean, dealt with the prime number magic squares. It was later observations. Okay. So again this is another prime number magic square. Here it is 219. So, 3 by 3 we made quite a few prime number magic squares and then we got bored. Like when, when we are able to do it after a point of time then we look for some more challenges. So we thought how to make a 4 by 4 prime number magic square. So then we started hunting, we were actually hunting for prime numbers in arithmetic progression. So how to get prime numbers in arithmetic progression. So if we have to get prime numbers in arithmetic progression, what should be the common difference that we should be looking for? The common difference of course can't be odd numbers because if it is odd numbers then it won't, one number would be even. 
right? And we have to get similar. So odd numbers is not. What is left is even numbers as common numbers. So it can't be two. If it is two, we get only one series: three, five, seven. That is only prime numbers in that. Can the common difference be four? Can it be six? Can it be eight? Can it be ten? So then we found some similarities in some uh, A B. So you can see here it is. See what is the common difference here? Thirty, thirty, thirty. And the earlier one, thirty, thirty, thirty. Earlier one, twelve, twelve, twelve. If you look vertically also, this this difference is seventy two and seventy two. Thirty six and thirty six. Is there anything similar in all the common differences? Multiples of six. There are multiples of six. So we found that it is easier to find out progression, arithmetic progressions with common difference as multiple of six, right? And why it works only for six or not for other numbers? That also we could figure out some proof. So magic squares really helped us learn a lot of other things. Now this is a prime number minus square with uh, sequences. <coughs> this is also arithmetic progression. But here you can see that the first term is not in an arithmetic progression. Eleven, forty-one, sixty-one, two fifty-one. So we were trying to get first is to get prime numbers in arithmetic progression with four terms is really difficult. I mean, you get it, but it is not as easy as three terms. Because fourth term, maybe say if we, if we start from the prime number, would always end with one, three, seven, or nine, except for our five and all. So a prime number will end with one, one, three, seven, or nine. So if the common difference is six, one plus six, next prime number has to end with seven. Seven plus six, next number prime number has to end with three. Three plus six next prime number has to end with nine. If we start from three, three plus six next prime number has to end with nine. Nine plus six next will end with five. So we won't get. So we, there is no point in starting with the prime number ending with three if we are taking the common difference as six. So like that we were just trying to explore something and. It was just a trial and error. I just put the numbers in these positions. The positions are the odd score positions. So once we know the positions, we just have to take four ABs and put it in those positions. And then, fortunately for me, it resulted in a magic square. So this, in fact, puzzled more, puzzled me more. Like I did not use an AP here. So how come it is working? What is the reason that it is working? So then we started. Find you now. This is another one. Now here you can see that it is not even an AP. It is not an arithmetic progression. Twenty nine thirty one, fifty nine sixty one. You know what are these called? Twenty nine thirty one, fifty nine sixty one, seventy one seventy three, hundred and one hundred and three. Twin prime. Twin prime. Twin prime. That is twenty nine and thirty one. There is only a thirty in between that. So these two numbers are called twin prime. So we took twin prime twenty nine plus two is. 31, 31 plus 28. So this common difference is 28. Here also you can see the common difference is 28. Here also it is 28. Here also it is 28. So we took one sequence with in this pattern and four other sequences in the same pattern and put in those positions of magic square and then that also resulted in a magic square. So this again it. Uh, We we started thinking why this works. So this is the reason why it works. This is our first a one, a two, a three, a four. So I just say this is the first one plus a certain difference x. First term plus a certain difference y. First term plus a certain difference z. And look at the positions one, two, three, four. In those positions I am putting one, two, three. Four. Similarly, next one will be five. So that is my next number, five. And then in those positions, so I write, I draw a four by four magic square. Look at the positions and I put the numbers here. 
So if we add any row or column, what, what happens here? We get a plus b plus c plus d plus x plus y plus z. A plus B plus C plus D plus X plus Y plus Z. A plus B plus C plus D plus X plus Y plus Z. So we add any row or column or diagonal, we get the same total. Now we can put in any values for A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. It will result in a minus square. So this is the logic behind the minus square. Earlier things can be used for easily remembering the positions so that we can construct a this was a 5 by 5 thing that we did. So here also it is a sequence. So 11 plus 20 is 31, 31 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20. So you can think of whatever numbers you want. You think of prime numbers for something that fascinated me. So I chose prime numbers. You can think of some other numbers. Somebody wants to think of Fibonacci numbers or maybe square numbers or cube numbers, we can just try it out, will it work for this particular number, right? Yeah. So it can be explored further in that and again, here also for 5 by 5 it is the same thing. For five, again there are many more constructions but uh, I just, you know, chose these particular uh, And before we conclude, I will just quickly take you through that research article by Dutta and Singh where he has written, uh, you know, about uh, magic squares in India. We will we'll just quickly go through that, it's, it's really beautiful. Uh, so history, uh, usually it is believed that or it is commonly believed that magic squares originated in China. There is a story that uh, there was a king who got a, a, a tortoise or a turtle from the river and he saw some uh, white and black dots on top of that and those dots, white dots represent even numbers and black represents odd or vice versa and it, it, it was the first magic square, it is called Lo Shu. Now this thing is actually, in, in, in this article, Dattan Singh they say, it was mentioned by a Chinese uh, mathematician or somebody somewhere in the 12th century. So but before that, there is no mention of this Lo Shu earlier. Right? So, and this can be just an interpretation made. So, in the end they give another, uh, uh, what is that, I say, if it, it has to be, if we can interpret things like that, he gives this uh, story. So, that is, says, uh, it, it, it is said in the Veda that gods Indra and Vishnu divided 1000 into 3. This incident is related in many works, Taitriya Samhita, Adhra Veda, Taitriya Brahmana, Shatapata Brahmana and Taitriya Samhita. I mean, in Taitriya Samhita, this is the verse. So, a thousand is divided into three at a three night festival, verily he makes her process of a thousand and he makes, uh, her the measure, he makes her the measure of a thousand. So, this magic squares, it was believed at, in, in, in different cultures magic squares have, have developed and it was believed that it has got some mystical powers, some magical powers. So like uh, Maria we call to Rotra. So if we have to you know do some Jadutona and uh, our enemy we have to do something for that or even to bring good luck and all so magic squares were used as uh, what is that uh, amulets and all. And if you go to some places like in, in Bombay we had been to uh, what is that uh, Ajanta not Ajanta Elephanta Elephanta Caves. So there also in the stalls uh, uh, there were some keychains sold in the form of magic squares. So they were just keychains. So it was believed at one point of time that they brought good luck or bad luck depending on the numbers in that. And recently one of my friends, he said, his relatives, they wanted to, you know, uh, bring some good, uh, good fortune to the house. So they went to a numerologist and he made a lot of uh, prime number magic squares and he pasted it on their walls of, and he charged a hefty sum of 25,000 and they happily Gave it down. I said you could have told me. I would have <laughs> made my research by cutting one zero. <laughs> so uh, it was believed like that, and probably that can be one reason why magic squares were not very famous or like we, we don't see much works until Narada Pandita who gives out an entire chapter of constructing magic squares. So that can be one probable reason. So he, you know, he 
cracks down this particular belief that there is no uh, mystical or magical powers for this magic squares and uh, he gives it. So Dutta and Singh, this, this is the article, so I will just take you through some, uh, some figures. So he does not, you know, uh, construct only 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5 or square shapes. He goes to other shapes. Like he thinks of transforming a square into some other shape. Look at this one. Now you can ignore this part from here. On the right side you can ignore. Because that is just the same thing repeated. You can look at this square. So see what? He has done. Narada Pandita, what he has done? He has broken every square into two triangles and written two numbers here. Now, if you add all these, again it will be a magic square. So, instead of putting one number, now he is splitting that into two parts and putting numbers and then, so instead of 1 to 16, it will be 1 to 32. Right? So, this is one particular shape and this he calls as a Vajra diamond. So, magic diamond. So that is just a tilted thing. What you saw over there, it, it is just a tilted version of this. And he <laughs> makes it in the form of petals. So it is the same thing. If you see 1 and 3 were 20, uh, uh, 1 and 23 were together there. So he makes another shape. And so here he cuts into four triangles and again puts numbers. 1264 and this also he, he does something really crazy or innovative. I don't know what this word it could be used. <laughs> so here, see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So basically it is one square here. So every square is divided into three parts. 35, 3 and 1. Right? And same thing he Arrange this in the other way. <laughs> this is another one. He is just using the same numbers, but he is arranging them in different ways. So this we call the magic lotus. Where if you add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 petals outside and 6 petals inside, you add, you will get the same magic constant. But the tricky thing is, this petal will be a part of this lotus as well as this lotus. <laughs> <laughs> and so, suppose we have a magic square, he makes it in the form of a magic triangle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is the magic constant. So those 9 numbers in a magic square written in the form of a triangle. Five numbers. This is for 16 numbers in a 4 by 4 square written like this. This again transformed into a circle. Again a square is transformed into a circle. 5 by 5 transformed into a circle. It goes on. <laughs> So there are uh, there are like that. I mean, there are many ways of constructing. But in the end, why it works? It works because of this. It's it's not the pattern. There is no magic in the magic square actually, but it's just a beautiful logic. Right? So yeah, and later on, if you have a, anything more to discuss, we will we'll discuss after the session. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Everything about magic square discussed here is dealt with in detail by Narayan Pandita in the 14th chapter of Ganita Kaumudi by the title Bhadra Ganitam. So, why he has given the title as Bhadra Ganitam? Instead of the name magic square, it would be appropriate that magic figures. 
यांची फिगर मणिभद्र वा वन ऑफ द ब्रदर ऑफ रावणा ही एनचॅन्टेड शिवा शिवा प्रत्यक्ष होते क्या चाहिये भद्र गणित चाहिये सो शिवा हिमसेल्फ हॅव सेड ऑल दोज थिंग्स विच आर रिटर्न बाय मणिभद्र दॅट्स वाय यू कॉल्ड इट ॲज भद्र गणिता देर आर फिफ्टी टू वर्सेस अँड सेवन्टीन एक्झाम्पल्स विथ डिफरंट केसेस now there is one more research article by rc gupta he gives the rational behind construction of this thing we will be able to give the proof or rational if we know progressions and also puttaka if we do not know puttaka we cannot construct it for the given constant k for the given, given constant k that is magic constant how to obtain the first term and common difference that will be dealt in puttaka this whole mathematics is translated by me in kannada with the explanation in narayana pandita's ganita kaumade and also shukla's article see the figure but they have not explained how a cell is to be filled up they obtain the number which cell is to, which, in which cell which number is to be filled up on what pattern they have not told it i have explained in my book that, that is going to be published all those things another one is that while carrying out this not only these are the uh, these are called by the name yantra this is a part of tantra shastra there are three kinds of yantras these are all anga yantras then bija akshara yantra ram him rum etc instead of that if we use the position of planets then it will be another type there was a belief now research is that you have to verify these results in hasan district also agasi gate of the village there are some magic cards are found because the cattle which go below that uh, uh, magic square will give more milk aisa ek kuch kaha agar chote bachche ko drishti kuch yantra dikhne so there, there are some beliefs that beliefs is beliefs is of beliefs if you want to do more research work which yantra for what purpose that is that is a question now research at least it has brought good luck for me <laughs> so so this is a uh, uh, thing and how we can think like uh, how what is the scope today so we can think in terms of sir in the lighter way in the lighter way कथा इन कन्नड इन कन्नड प्रबुद्ध कर्नाटक देर वॉज ए जर्नल विच इज टॉप इन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी नाइन ऑफ स्कॉलर जर्नल किंग ही हैड फाइव क्वींस टू गौलीस want to present some uh, buffaloes and some cows one person brought with him with, with him five buffaloes of five categories one buffalo gave one liter five buffaloes gave five liter that means one category belonging to giving one liter milk second category giving two liter two liter milk third category three liter milk fourth category four liter milk fifth category five liter milk likewise they were 25 cows belonging to five categories they are also of the same one category five cows of one liter milk one one liter milk another second category for two liter third category for three liter fourth category for four liter etc for at the village at the gate of the village agasi hatra hmm. one buffalo giving one liter milk was tied with cow of one liter 1 liter buffalo with 2 liter cow 
वन बफला विथ थ्री लीटर कौ वन बफला विथ फोर लीटर वन फाइव लीटर सच कपल से फॉर्म नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज वी शुड अरेज दो कपल्स इन सच ए वे दैट नंबर ऑफ बबले शुड बी इक्वल टू ईच क्वे नंबर ऑफ क्वांटिटी ऑफ मिल्क शुड बी इक्वल क्वांटिटी ऑफ कौ मिल्क शुड बी इक्वल एंड क्वांटिटी ऑफ बफला मिल्क शुड बी इक्वल both quantity of milk of different categories sorry, number of cattle should be equal if we take either row or column so it has been arranged it has been arranged by the his prime minister because always ministers will be buddhivant rehte raja jo hai na mood rehta hai so he has arranged so then he had arranged in the form of a match square the problem was solved some of students will ask questions why it is needed it is needed for such purposes also so aisa katha aap bata sakte hain wo kaisa arrange kiye 5 by 5 match square first 11 11 12 11 12 13 14 15 21 22 23 aisa leke uska add karna कैसा ऐड करना वो आप कर सकते हैं हाँ इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टेकिंग दीज नंबर लास्ट वन हाँ फिफ्टीन यू हैव टू अरेज दीज ट्वेंटी फाइव नंबर इन सच ए वे दैट सम इट इट फॉर्म्स एन मैच I saw when you start a class, you should start with a katha, or you should start with a ghatana. Then interest will be created. Then trick. Afterwards, the rational. If you if you say rational first, they will it will be above there. <laughs> just another thought i just mentioned and uh, we will conclude so this particular way especially the folding method i i feel that we can uh, we can extend it to some practical purposes like when we have to uh, say if we, if we have to yesterday i was discussing with the uh, sir yesterday that if there is a certain password consisting of nine digits there is another password consisting of nine digits we write these two passwords like that and then it has to be folded suppose i am the boss i am giving i i want uh, the password let's say it is uh, for a certain purpose but i don't want these three guys to know what is the password i give a part i give the first thing to him first thing to him and the next thing to him so he will come and enter the first nine numbers in the form of a magic square he will also come and enter the next number so both of them don't know each other's number the third one will can think of like his job is to add these two particular things in that particular way so that would result to the password for unlocking that particular thing or launching a particular thing or whatever so that can be one possible way in which we can do or maybe if you want to uh, say if, if there are, if there is a serial number that we have to send serial number of 25 uh, characters so from one to here so we arrange them in that particular order so we know what is the order and we arrange in that particular order and this thing has been uh, kept safe so somebody who knows this particular order only they will be able to decode the serial order of this particular thing so those ways we can think of its application in cryptography or uh, some other similar fields this refers to something is called as padabandha okay. exactly the same thing they have done there oh. uh, This was about again a kind of personal matter, construction yeah. of poetry. Uh, And then, uh, yeah, my understanding is that is the meaning of uh, sector communication. Okay, okay. Yeah. They, the same is may not only the squares, but the one that follows different variety, like you saw, uh, petals and all, uh, mandir and uh, flag and so many things. Uh, so in that way, they uh, they that is the order in which you have to send the message. Uh, uh, That uh, it said that it very big book was there and then most of the part of that book is lost and very small portion is there but that itself is very fascinating. Yeah. Well, but Kiri sir gave me the reference and then I started doing some things on that. One suggestion to be given in particular sir, sir. and all of us comes in general is that while teaching these things, you should use the 
ancient technical works. He said folding. It was the method taught by Narayana. There should be some term. What is that term? Dayanam. Some term. So, see how attentive he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, some putta vidhana. So, the technical terms while teaching the methods, the technical terms used by the ancient scholars is to be Thurada Gati. So, we are upper so we are in bracket somewhere that is clockwise, upper somewhere anti clockwise. Now, Ustra, when diagonal is Ustra Gati, diagonal movement is called as Ustra Gati. So, the technical terms which are used by the ancient scholars in brackets that will it will help disappear in the, the crypto. So you should keep in mind this and in the, in the next lecture you should use those terms. <laughs> it's Agraha Purvak Batana hai. Janna, why? Amma is class ke baad Pythagoras Pranayin kahane ka nahi. Which I don't think I'm going to do. Like that one, instead of magic squares, Hadragaritam. Or row, column, whatever is there, whichever technical terms are available, we should use them. If not, coin some technical terms in that line. Oh. <laughs> I think this time is good. So, Vinay has to a big head for him. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I, I got this friend of mine, so he also got interested in that. And in fact, uh, he, Sridhar, and I am talking about Sridhar. His name is, uh, his name is Sarinaran. So, I will just show you the kind of. Uh, These are the magic squares that he prepared in his Samsung. <laughs> All are prime number magic squares. So he kept on going. He said we will make a hundred prime number magic squares and then just get a printout of them. So here this MS is a magic constant. So he kept going with 3 by 3. I went to 4 by 4, 5 by 5. What's his name? His name is R. Hariharan. R. Hariharan. It's over 65 uh, prime yes. number magic squares. And then finally, we <laughs> told him to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a very interesting, and when, when you go to schools and all children, they really get attracted by this particular uh, hobby. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnam Purnam Dachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyotamaha Hari Om